Hello everyone. Thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. I am Neeti Saxena and I am taking the subject Principles and Practices of Management. This particular video would uh, be explaining you what is the uh, word departmentalization, what is the meaning of departmentalization and what are the different types of departments that can be uh, formed in an organization. Before moving on, uh, let me just tell you that in the previous uh, videos of which were related to module 4, we have covered what is organizing and uh, certain uh, um, key points like the uh, span of control, departmentalization, authority and delegation of authority. In this particular video, we would be understanding departmentalization in detail which leads to different types of organization like matrix, virtual and multidivisional. So let me just explain you first what is departmentalization. When we talk about an organization, every organization has a lot of different works that uh, the people have to do there. So depending upon the work and depending upon uh, the different uh, requirements of the organization, the entire organization is subdivided into small groups, small working groups, which work together to achieve a common goal. These groups are called as departments. Uh, so let me just go through these the points. A work group brought together for performing certain functions of similar nature. So this is a work group which are formed in, uh, in the organization. These people who are in the group in one group they perform similar kind of work. Departments are the various parts or divisions of an enterprise. It is the process of division of enterprise into different parts known as departments. It helps in simplifying the task of top management. For example, if there are 10 different tasks which are to be done in the organization, so related to every task, there are different groups which are formed. So the, the top management is able to keep a control on the organization and uh, the work gets simplified because not everyone is doing the same work. It is the groups, different groups who are performing different tasks. So the control over every group is uh, easily then managed by the top management. So the advantages of departmentalization of course one is specialization that every department is specialized to do one particular work. So they become expert in that work. Increases efficiency because when some particular group is specialized in that work and they know very well what they have to do then of course the efficiency of the organization and of that group increases. It helps in fixation of responsibility. As I said, if there are 10 different tasks which have to be performed in an organization, then every group is given one task. This task when you give to a group is that particular group becomes responsible to finish that particular task. So it helps in fixation of responsibility helps an appraisal because when you are keeping a control and a, a close check on the group you will be able to understand or the top management would be able to understand when to appraise and whom to appraise. It helps in training of executives because then you do not have to give training to an individual of everything. It's just that what task or what group does he belong to related to that training is given. For example, if a person is related to HR, then only HR training would be given to that person. If a person is related to marketing, training related to the marketing aspect would be given to that person. And of course, control is something that we have already discussed that it helps in uh, keeping a close control on the groups and the top management is able to monitor everything easily. Now, these are the different types of departments that can be formed. Functional, product, process, customer, geographical area, project, matrix and network. Every organization can have one or multiple kind of departmentalization in the organization. Let me just go through these uh, departmentalization one by one. First, let me talk about the functional structure. It is very, very simple. There are different functions which are to be performed in an organization. HR, marketing, sales, account, finance, uh, operations, uh, production. So, depending upon every function, one department is formed, HR department, marketing department, sales department, accounts department, operations department. So let me just go through the bullet points. In a functional structure, activities are grouped and departments are created on the basis of specified functions to be performed. It is useful where specialization is required in the performance of various functions like production, finance, marketing, etc. Second is product or divisional structure. At times what happens is that the organization land up producing different products. For example, uh, let's say if it is in the FMCG industry, it might be producing, let's say, toothpaste. At the same time, it must be producing uh, medicines also. So now you have multiple range of products. So depending upon the range of products, you divide the organization. Medicine division, toothpaste division, 
maybe biscuit division or whatever. So such type of structure is adopted by organizations having multiple product lines. Each major product or product line is organized as a separate division. It is appropriate when each product is relatively complex. So what happens is that every department, like for example, when I told you about uh, medicine department, now this medicine department would further have sub departments like accounts, HR, marketing, etc. The let's say the biscuit department would again have these different uh, sub departments. So if you can see in this particular um, diagram, Bombardier Limited is a company which has uh, three different divisions mass transit sector, recreation and utility vehicle and rail product sector. So these are the three different products which the company is producing and depending upon the products, the company has divided the entire organization into three verticals. And then further you can see that it has further different uh, uh, subdivisions in every vertical. So this is called as the product or the divisional structure. Again, this is another example. Hyens is a company which is into FMCG. They produces food service division. They have an infant food division. They have condiments division. And then, of course, they have start kiss tuna division, pet food, frozen foods, miscellaneous product division. So depending upon the different types of food that they are producing, they have departmentalized their organization. Third is process departmentalization. Now, at, actually, at times what happens is that in case if the pro product that you are producing is very, very complex, that means the production of that particular product is very, very complex and very, very tedious. Then depending upon the different stages through which the product goes, the entire organization is divided into uh, different subdivisions or departments. Let me give you an example of, let's say, car. When a company is producing car, then it goes through multiple phases. You have to uh, get different uh, parts of the cars. Maybe you are manufacturing it yourself or maybe you've outsourced it. So you're purchasing that product and then the entire car goes to the different uh, stages of production. So depending upon the stages of production, the entire organization is divided into uh, sub departments or departments. Let me just, uh, if we go through this particular diagram, see the first department is sewing department manager, then you have planning and milling department, then you have assembling department, lacquering and sanding department, finishing department and inspection and shipping department. So one product is going through this multiple stages. So when the, when the product is going through multiple stages, then these according to the stages, every stage has one department. If we go through the uh, bullet points, it is more efficient flow of work activities can only be used with certain type of products. Why certain type of products? Because if the products needs uh, or goes through multiple stages while production, then of course process departmentalization is very beneficial. Then comes customer departmentalization. At times it happens that the company is producing one product, but then they are de dealing with multiple customers. They might be dealing with the wholesalers, they might be dealing with the retailers, they might be dealing with the government accounts, they might be dealing with the corporates. So depending upon the different customers, the entire organization is divided into different departments. That is called as a customer departmentalization. If I give you an example, when we talk about service industry, maybe a company is producing services, providing services to the government, it is providing services to corporate, it is providing services to individuals also. So then the entire organization can be divided into the government division, corporate division, individual division. So let me just go through the bullet points. Followed in enterprises engage in providing specialized services to different classes of customers. Customers are the guide for grouping the activities. So director sales, it has three divisions, manager retail accounts, wholesale accounts and government accounts. Then comes geographical di division. When you, or geographical departmentalization, when the organization is spread worldwide or, you know, maybe like when we talk about India, so then India is huge. So maybe then, you know, you can divide the organization into Western division, Eastern Division, Southern Division, Northern Division. When we talk about the world, maybe, you know, if the company is spread in different uh, continents, so continents wise, you can divide maybe European Division, Asian, American. So every division or every department would be dealing with that particular region. It is followed in case of service organizations, which have offices in different regions or geographical areas. See? If you look into this particular diagram, you have retail division AB 
and international division international division further deals with latin america europe and asia so if the entire organization is spread into a lot of for different uh, geographical areas then you can have geographical departmentalization this is very interesting which is called as project departmentalization these days a lot of companies are outsourcing their uh, tasks to different organizations so these organization which are you know maybe like working as a consultants or maybe are a kpo or a, any such organization which takes up multiple projects from different uh, organizations so then they have multiple projects so depending upon the projects the entire organization can be divided into project departmentalization if a company is taking projects which deal with different industries so then depending upon the different type of projects the entire organization can be divided into project departmentalization if we read the first uh, bullet a project may be defined as a complex set of activities which are diverse specialized and technical to be performed within the given time frame and cost structure for example if you talk about hcl ibm these are certain companies which takes up projects from the government from international organizations also so depending upon the kind of projects that they are taking they divide the organizations into project departments the project staff is separate from and independent of the functional departments so a, a company might have functional departments also at the same time they have project departments also project departments deals or these project teams they deal only with specific project and they are not related to the functional departmentalization they are independent of that i hope this point is clear to you function departmentalization is hr department accounts finance marketing department etc at the same time the company can have project de departmentalization also like it projects uh finance projects maybe hr projects so when these people are dealing with these projects they are only dealing with the projects and not reporting to the uh, respective departments this would be for a company that does projects as a main part of the business most resources are involved in project work since the project lead has the team reporting to him her he she has a lot of authority at the end of the project the team members are reassigned so every project team has a project leader and then this project leader is responsible for getting that particular project accomplished see here you can see you have different uh, project managers john jane sue and then you have every project uh, leader has some people working under them matrix is a wonderful way of uh, departmentalizing your organization in this it is a mixture of functional and project departmentalization that means the company has a i'll show you the slide first here the company has a functional departmentalization but at the same time the company has project departmentalization also so when a company has these project departmentalization they pick up people from different uh, functions like purchase production r&d marketing finance they might pick one people each from these uh, different departments and form project a similarly project b again might have people from purchase production r&d marketing finance and they form project b project c might again take one individual or two individual from each departments now these individuals which are coming from different departments and are working together under one project would be reporting to the project manager as well as to their respective functional heads once the project is completed these people again go back to their functional departments so this is basically that as and when you are getting certain projects and you need people from different departments you pick up people from different departments you form a project team when this project team is formed these people who come from different departments would be working for that particular project and would be reporting to the project head and also to the functional head once the project is accomplished these people go back to their respective departments so that is the reason it is called as a matrix structure when in a grid or a matrix is formed and these people are reporting to both the both project and functional heads now let's read the bullet points it is also called as a grid organization it is a hybrid structure combining functional and project structure it is a highly flexible form that is readily adaptable to changing circumstances matrix structure relies heavily on committee and team authority some companies use the matrix organization as a temporary measure to complete a specific project the end of the project usually means the end of the matrix because when the project ends these people go back to their functional departments and there is no more matrix next is network or virtual organization these days what is happening as i told you that many organization are outsourcing their uh, tasks to the other organizations because they think that they do not want to put in money 
for this particular task or maybe they do not have expertise for this particular task so they find out an organization which has expertise in that task and then they outsource that particular task to the company so now in in such a situation the organization becomes a network or virtual organization people are not working in the in under one roof maybe you are giving tasks to people who are working from home so the organization doesn't actually is uh, practically it doesn't exist but it exists virtually so it is let me just read the first bullet it is a flexible usually temporary set of alliances among disparate companies that have come together for a specific single purpose it allows organizations to focus on that which they do best that is their core competence so if there are five companies and they have a common goal every company would be doing their own um, task which is related to their competency areas in this way organizations can discontinue activities not part of its core and may outsource such functions from from the other firms see now one organization which is uh, which says that okay we are good at finance operations and management so we keep these things with ourselves the finance operation and management of my company would be handled by my company only but i outsource the accounting and human resource to contracted administrative services i also outsource distribution and logistic i also outsource my sales and marketing i also outsource manufacturing in contracted manufacturing in asia what task am i doing myself my finance operations and management while the other um task or the functions of my department of my organization i have outsourced to the different companies so then this structure becomes a network or a virtual organization let me just take to the slide wherein we had discussed that what are the different types of departmentalization i hope it is clear functional is uh categorizing the uh, uh, or departmentalizing the organization depending upon the different functions like hr marketing product depending upon the different product that you have you divide the entire company into different products process if the company is producing a particular product which goes through multiple stages so depending upon the entire stages of the process you divide the organization into different departments different types of customers are coming to you so you divide the entire organization based on the customers you have geographical area if the company is spread into vast geographical uh, area so you divide the entire organization on the basis of the area or on the basis of the geographical area if the company is taken multiple projects then the company is divided into different departments based on the projects matrix is a combination of functional and project wherein people working together under one project team are reporting both to the project head and the functional head network is when the company is not uh, doing all the things by themselves but are outsourcing their uh, functions to different companies then this uh, structure becomes a network organization i hope with this summary uh, you were able to understand the uh, concepts of departmentalization thank you so much for watching this particular video